Okay, my buddy uh, David Orr is going to do a blog. So, uh, I want to give it to him. Is this live? Is this live? Yeah, people are watching you. Oh, okay. No, dude. Hi. Um. <laughs> I'm David, and um, right now it looks like I'm imploding. Do you need me to change it, or do you want the implosion? I don't care. This uh, record I'm holding up is called Mike Watt, Contemplating the Engine Room. Um, it came out in 1997. That's almost 12 years ago. So if um, a baby was conceived on the same day this album was released, they'd be almost 12. Think about cigarettes now, though. Um, they would be almost out of elementary school, I think. So they would probably, probably be in middle school. Um, it has a, a label affixed to the front here. Um, I'm sorry, it's hard to figure out how to show this. Um, but he says, here's my latest piece, Contemplating the Engine Room. It's about, it, this is a story about three guys in the engine room of a boat. It's also a metaphor for what's flying through my head. It's about the Minutemen. That was the band he was in in the early 80s on SST Records. Um, it's about the Minutemen, my pop in the Navy, Pedro, my town, that's San Pedro, California, and how I got to where I am now. It's a punk rock opera. Each song is a piece of the day, starting from just before dawn and ending, ending 23 plus one hours later, which is a clever way to say 24 uh, a day <laughs> later. What I really wanted to do is make one whole piece that celebrates three people playing together. Um, I think that sticker gives you a good feeling for Mike Watt's attitude in life. This is a picture of Mike Watt. He's got a blue collar feel. What? <laughs> this imploding black hole of the internet is hard to I can change work it. with, but it's okay because this is the way the internet is today. Um, Put the lips on it. But as you can tell, uh, he's wearing a flannel uh, shirt, <laughs> and he has um, graying hair in this. I think now he has a really big beard, and he might have gained a little weight. Uh, but he's always been kind of a stocky, I can find his website um, friendly, sort of burly gentleman. Um, if he's got a mustache now. If you're familiar with the song, uh, there's a song... Uh, on uh, Daydream Nation, which is a record album by Sonic Youth, and he's on it. Um, uh, on a, uh, uh, there's a really cute song about him. Um, he's on a. Yeah. He's on a. He's on a song. He's asking about. Um, he's he's like a, on an answering machine. Yeah, I feel like I just got punched digitally, and. Uh, He's on the answering machine, and he's asking Thurston Moore what he did with his marijuana. Um, and he, he's wondering, like, did you throw it away? And then he's like, he also exhorts him to be more careful with his weed. Um, it was put out on Columbia Records. Um, it has a retro vintage feel to it. If you, look at the, <laughs> if you look at the back cover, you'll see that... The yeah. font that they chose is a is uh, an engineering style font that mimics like uh, the, the the good handwriting of engineers. Um, <laughs> it told me that I was being naughty. Uh, I'm imagining on the front cover this is uh, Mike Watt's father, uh, who is in the Navy and is a working man and is a guy that Mike Watt clearly uh, has a lot of reverence for. This is a long album. Um, <coughs> It has, uh, it's almost in the entire um, 79 minutes or however much fits on a CD. Um, and it's lots of ups and downs that you feel throughout the day. <laughs> um, there, uh, there are some really uh, pop-oriented songs that are more upbeat and friendly. And there are some other, song, other songs that are more contemplative and... Um, atmospheric and feel. This album is aided greatly by the guitar guitar mastery of Nels Klein, who's um, 
this this Dutchman right here. Um, he plays the guitar. Nels Klein plays the guitar very well, and his fluid and expressive guitar parts on this album really help to drive it home. Uh, Stephen Hodges plays drums. I think he also sang for Third Eye Blind. Uh, I like the cute icons that are used throughout the liner notes to depict different songs. Stephen Jenkins is not good. I've been schooled about <laughs> Third Eye Blind. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a... Um, it's a kind of a good. I haven't opened up these liner notes in years, and I, they've got a good feel to them. I'll share them. The look of it, actually. Um, it's, it's got cotton. a good smell and feel. It's, it's got a good smell and feel to them. It's kind of like a vintage manual for operating a submarine. <laughs> yeah. Um. He has a lot of thank yous. Um, I'm not going to read them all, but some of the famous oh, on, people please. you might have heard of include Carla Bozulich, Who? Flea, Flea, Wes Claypool, <coughs> Jay Mastic of Dinosaurs Jr., Claypool, Perry, who I believe would be <laughs> Claypool, <laughs> Perry Farrell from the um, Cornograph. The, that band, the fire, yeah. But, um, he also thanks the entire Thurston Moore family, including their baby daughter Coco. So at this time, it's probably a teenager, and I wonder what that's like. He thanks Seal. Uh, he thanks uh, Sal. I'm sorry. He thanks actually. He he thanks uh, the guy from Third Eye Blind, Stephen Perkins. Oh. Um, Steve Shelley, that's the drummer of Sonic Youth. Um, Tricky, who's a DJ. He's also African American, like Seal. He thinks George Hurley. And actually, it's interesting. Um, this is a touching album. He talks about his friends from the old days, including he has a song that's dedicated to George Hurley, the drummer for the Minutemen and Firehose. And uh, it's called Fireman Hurley. And it's just about how he's a good, dependable guy and good in the clutch. Um, he also has a, a sweet song about uh, his friend um, uh, D. Boone, the singer for the Minutemen, who um, he has a song called The Boiler Man that will bring a tear to the most jammed eye. Um, Look at your shoulder, So all in all, I give this record two thumbs up. <laughs> oh, I can get you a thumb up. And, uh, oh, I can get you a thumb up. Check it out. You got one? Oh, let me do it again. If you're ever in the mood to have um, about 80 minutes of emotional time, I recommend Mike Watt, Contemplating the Engine Room, released 1997 Columbia Records. Oops, what happened there? That's good. There you go. I did a video blog. Okay, well, I lost it.